money. Spontaneity is my favorite thing. Good evening, everyone. I'm your cruise host, Jason, and thank you so much for joining us for our first all-access pass of the 10th anniversary of the Malt Shop Memories Cruise. Uh, welcome. We're here in B.B. King's Blues Club today, and uh, for those of you watching in your rooms, of course, you can find all the subsequent all-access passes that Jerry and I do right here on this very channel. And as I was just telling the fine folks in the audience, if you have a look under the Malt Shop menu, you will also find that we have uh, the last four or five years collections of them. So if you want to see some of the past interviews we did with stars, you can find those on your TV as well. Uh, for those of you live in the room, let's get right to it. Uh, you got to see this man perform last night, not to mention for a few years now. Let's get him out here. Put your hands together for the one and only Lou Christie. There you are, sir. I thought you said band. <laughs> you said man? Man, said right. man yes, oh, I man. You said, I said band. You, know. you thought you had to bring somebody with you. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you for being here with us. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Uh, before we even start talking about you yourself, what was it like being back on stage on the Malt Shop Memories Cruise last night with all these Promo, fantastic promo, things? promo. Yeah. Just great. It was great. <laughs> but to be honest, it was just great. It was fantastic. How many were at the show last night? Oh yeah. Oh. Good. Uh, I, it was it was wonderful. I mean, it really was. Uh, you know, it was very special. Uh, I I was pretty beat, but somehow I got an extra bounce of energy by that second show, and uh, we we just had a great time. And thank you for all the standing ovations that you gave me last night, because I. I know how hard it is to stand up now as I get older. You know, so. I want, I want, yeah, I want to know at what age the grunt starts. Do you have the grunt? It's when you sit. <clears throat> it's just that little. It's <clears throat> no, I haven't hit the grunt yet. You haven't hit the I, grunt yet. I, I go. Well, it's sort of that. It's more that. Thing. Our it's notes are that. different, but yeah, we're going the same place. Uh, the only reason I ask that that uh, horribly narcissistic promo is when you there's something unique about malt shop. As as a not just the cruise, but as uh, as a clientele, as a as an era, as a musical style, and it is we do about seven or eight different themes and formats, but one of the most passionate we have is this one, and this is sure. one of the oldest demos. No offense, but it is one of the older demos we do, and it's one of the most passionate passionate fan bases. It's got to be cool as an entertainer to still have the kids out there in front of you, you know, jumping up and down and dancing and standing ovations. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, my my job, to be quite honest, is trying to turn 17 every time I walk out on the stage. <laughs> so I don't know how old you have to turn, but I have to turn about 17, and that's not, it's getting a hell of a, a problem now. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, uh, it's like a class reunion to me. You know, it <laughs> really cool, is yeah. because first of all, when I get on the shows, uh, you know, if we're lucky to have like some other people on the shows, sure. like like there are on the ship here. Uh, because they're all people that I've traveled with for 50, almost Reunion 60 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all the, you know, I saw one of the Flamingos the other day, you know, and then Shirley's here from the Shirelles and Dee Dee from the Crystals. And so these are people that 1962, we traveled together on the Dick Clark Caravan of Stars. And um, they, they were really like my graduating class and we're still friends. And it's so amazing that, we, you know, it, that happens in your lifetime, sure. you know, that you get to see these people every couple months or every couple weeks. It's got to be fun, too, to, to perform. You know, not just bump in, but you're you're still doing what you were doing when you were 17, right? You're still <laughs> prepping to get on the stage yeah. and do your shows. So it's almost, it's not just reunion of personalities. It's still the same thing that you're doing in a lot of ways. Yeah, know? exactly. Very lucky. Absolutely. Uh, I know that we hear from our guests every single year, you know, oh, don't let the malt shop cruise grow, don't let the malt shop cruise go. And it's not something we've talked about for the record, but, you know, we hear, like, there's an angst about letting this this uh, this cruise go. And I think you're a great example, though, and last night was a great example with, with you and Gary. You know, this music is far, far from over. It, it's not, it still has a lot of energy, and it still has such resonance with everyone, you know, out there in the audience. It was, it was cool it to does. see. Yeah, it, it does. What's that? As long as you're alive, you're going to be here. Atta girl rocks. Atta girl rocks. Do, do I hear a Long Island <laughs> yeah. accent? Oh, that's, don't, 
Is that it? We know where we love her. Don't get her started. That's a. It's oh, a whole okay. other. <laughs> oh, now we're gonna have fun. <laughs> exactly. All right. This this show just took a turn. <laughs> Uh, for those in the audience, and I'm sure we don't have any, but maybe watching uh, back in the rooms, let's go back to the beginning. How does Little Lou get into music in the first place? How does it start? Little Lou. Little Lou. <laughs> we Little Lou. Way back. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, well, you want to know how I was, where I was I raised? I want to know what now. Uh, you, well, you can take it wherever you want. What inspired you to get into music? What age were you? Why? How'd you get here? Not having to go to a steel mill and work. <laughs> I, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And of course, not, that was nothing but steel mills there. Got it. And my father worked in a steel mill. And uh, I was raised on a farm. We also had a, a farm, 109 acres. So um, as, as I watched my dad get up at 4 or 5 in the morning and you know work three different shifts and see all my uncles and cousins and that go into the steel mill, I said, no, 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 this is not what I want to do. Not and my path. No, yeah. and then, of course, when I was, um, you know, there was music in our family all the time. Uh, my mother sang, my dad sang, they had perfect pitch their whole life. I mean, Singing in the steel mill. I, I yeah. thought everyone could sing, though, that was the problem. I really did, I thought everyone could sing, but being Italian and, you know, we had a lot of, my dad had an old beat-up guitar, and he knew four chords, and that was the four chords that he sang with any song. Somehow yeah. it worked. That's all you need. Uh, but uh, music was just part of our family, you know, our existence. And, um, and I said, I, I told my dad, uh, I'm probably about 15 years old, he said, what are you going to do when you get out of school, high school, you know? You know, so I was cleaning the garage or something, and I said, I'm... And I was like, he, I'd had it about up to here, because I thought, I'm not going into this steel mill. I said, I'm going to be a singer. Finish uh, cleaning the garage. Now, yeah. my dad, exactly. I did finish cleaning the garage. But he was, uh, you know, a very stocky Italian guy who played football for St. Bonaventure. And, you know, he was the real deal and worked in the steel mill every day. He said, a singer? What? What I said, yeah. Well, uh, he he really he and he looked at me. He said, "Don't talk about it. Do it." He never brought it up again, and that's why I'm sitting here today. I didn't talk about it, and I'm don't. I did it. So. And now I do things like put you on interviews and make you talk about it. Yeah, so I know, and that's the one thing I can't stand to do is to talk about it <laughs> and talk about myself. I don't like it. It's, you know, and I, I remember it because I don't, I don't like to talk about what sure. am I going to do? What are you doing? You know, sure. Because it's, uh, you, you take that energy and you put it mm -hmm. somewhere else. If you sit around and talk about yourself, my father said, don't talk about it. Just do it. And it, there is something to that, you know. Do you remember what your first step was towards just doing it at that age? Do you remember what you, in your mind, thought? I remember like every step that I took. Uh, <laughs> the very first step that I, uh, that I was aware of is when I was in first grade, um, and I was picked to s sing Away in a Manger as Joseph, and uh, another little girl, Judy Hoskinson. Um, it's a hell of a memory at this point. <laughs> she was Mary, and I was Joseph, and we sang Away in a Manger. And... I heard applause for the first time, and I thought, they're applauding? Wow. <laughs> no one applauded in my family at me singing. Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all sang, so it was like a rarity. So, and Your I thought, dad wasn't getting applause in the steel mill every day. So no, yeah. he, no, he wasn't, no. He, didn't, he, he wouldn't hear it anyhow, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, um, and then, um, you know, just one thing led to another. Second grade, I was doing something else, singing. Then third grade, you know, I just kept yeah. going that way, but I just kept moving forward uh, as a singer, uh, only because I just love music so much. Uh, I didn't necessarily, I don't know, it sort of found me. I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to be like someone, except when I started getting older and I saw <laughs> TV, and then Bandstand, and then Ed Sullivan Show, and you know, that kind of a thing, and I thought, wow. Do you remember who you saw that kind of, oh my goodness. Well, Elvis was one. Um, and, of course, I admired so many people then when Bandstand came on. Uh, I mean, just to see, you know, Frankie Avalon come on sure. and Bobby Rydell and Fabian and that. These were all people that were my age. Yeah. 
or a little older maybe. Uh, but uh, no, I mean, Bandstand was wonderful. And then I saw Annette Funicello come on, and I said... <laughs> I Frankie th who? I'm I in there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, oh, you, you just answered it for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, I mean, you, you, you started, you hit successful at a young age. I mean, you became, you know, you, you didn't wait till your 30s to become a star. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I knew records. Were, I was getting obsessed with records. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and my mother used to have the big 78s. And my mother and dad would buy the big 78 records. And, uh, you know, we had a, uh, was, what was it called? A, Victroller and yeah, things, or something, whatever it was yeah. called, you know, and then the AM radio on it, you know. Uh, but mom used to uh, play all the like Peggy Lee. She was a big sure. fan of Peggy Lee's, and she she sang as good as Peggy Lee too. And then mom and dad played, um, you know, Les Paul and Mary Ford records, which I just oh, love, cool. and the McGuire Sisters and all that. Yeah. So I was raised with all that kind of you know harmonies and sure. And did that? <clears throat> did you, as you developed your own sound? Do you feel like you had it in your head from listening to all that that you'd kind of built a sound that was? Or, or I wasn't aware own? I was building yeah, it, building were. anything. Uh, uh, <laughs> because sure, I, how can you be? Yeah. Because I sang, um, my voice was you know high when I was little. Then it changed into the low voice, and I had like when I sang in choir in school, I had the lowest bass voice. And then I had the high <laughs> soprano voice. I could sing anything. I was like, but I wasn't, I thought everyone could sing, so I didn't think it was that unique. Uh, and I didn't make plans. Oh, I'm going to sing in this key, and I think I'm going to move that, you know, and do have, have three octaves or three and a half octaves to sing in. But just about every damn record that I make, I have to sing in three <laughs> octaves, you know. Um, Once uh, they know you can do it, yeah. Yeah, I have to do it because the first song that I wrote was The Gypsy Cried, and I wrote it with Twyla. And uh, and Twyla was my partner, writing partner. We met when I was 15. And that was the first song we wrote. And it was, I wrote it in 15 minutes yeah. with her. And it became my first million selling record, you know. Written in 15 minutes. Yeah. Your first song. Yeah. You don't set the bar high. That's fine. There's just, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the bar was set and I had to figure out how to <laughs> jump it, you know, as, as it went on. Because I had to follow it up and I had to follow it up. And I did with Two Faces of I. Mm -hmm. That was the second one, you know. So we were really on a roll, you know. Now, one of the things I like to do, and as uh, for those of you that come back to the All Access Pass, I know we like to have our audience involved. It's difficult to run a microphone around and hear you sometimes. So uh, my wife shows up a little early, and she passes around question cards. So I like to have the audience involved in our Q&A. So I sprinkle them in every now and then. Uh, Sandy comes to us from South Phila. She says, uh, what are some of your favorite memories from performing on American Bandstand? Oh. First memory. Well, first of all, by the time I hit American Bandstand, I knew just about everyone in the, who danced on American Bandstand, like Franny Giordano and... Um, um, what was that? Arlene, uh, Ar Arlene Sullivan and Billy Sullivan and uh, Scaldaferi. What was it? Carol Scaldaferi? But, but just from watching American Bandstand, I thought I was scared to just do to American Bandstand with the Gypsy Cried because I thought, you know, they just saw Fabian come out and you know and and all the other stars, and I was going to be. The, this was my first time in Philadelphia, and so uh, to do that to do the show and. Um, it was uh, so ex it was so exciting. It was sort of uh, an out of body experience, you know. And then, of course, Dick uh, then liked me and liked the records and contacted me after I went back to Pittsburgh. And I had had the record was such a big hit. Then he was taken off with uh, the Caravan of Stars. He was putting together that, and we were. He asked, called, and asked if I wanted to do it. So there I was on the Caravan of Stars with. All the people that I bought records, I had all their records in the <laughs> in my bedroom. You know, uh, it was like Paul and Paula were on the show, uh, the Supremes, Diana Ross, and the well, D Diana was in the sh in the in the group then. Uh, the Crystals, the Drifters, you know, uh, you know, and I tell it's everyone. It's got to be surreal. I mean. Oh, it it really was, and here I was sitting next to you know Paula or Diana Ross or who are Gene Pitney, uh, you know, you know. And I slept with all of them, you know, by the way. As you do. Well, we, we stayed it's in on. the book. Yeah, we, it's in the book. Yeah. No, no. I, was, I, knew, I knew he'd go there. Yeah. No. We, well, we slept on the bus every, no, every other night. And every other night, then we would get a, a hotel room. We would all sleep in a hotel room. But uh, every other night, we would sleep 
on the bus. On together. the bus. Peter Asher was talking about that earlier. He said, yeah, Peter was on it for a while with Peter and Gordon, and he was saying it was, you slept on the bus one night, they got a hotel the other night. They... <laughs> All right, um, we have, uh, forgive me, yell out if I get, Felice, is that right? Lou. Saint. Felice Navidad. <laughs> Saint up. Blaze. Saint Blaze. Yes, yes, from yes. Sends you her love, oh, and if I gosh, can't give you, you this message, she'll never light me another candle. Well, please tell her I said hi. Uh, she she comes to see my shows when I'm sort of around New York City a lot or Connecticut or something like that, where she can come to. And she forever gives me a, a, a pagan ritual thing of the blessing from St. Blaise, because St. Blaise was the, the saint of, of, of throats and things like that, and... I don't know, children and chickens or something. I don't know. There's all a lot kind of saints. Of, <laughs> There's a lot of saints. Animals and yeah. all kinds. You know, but, uh, <laughs> children, but chickens. She, but she, <laughs> but she's, uh, she's a lovely person, and you know, she's forever giving me something about St. Blaise. So she's always giving me a St. Blaise blessing. So tell her I give her a blessing, too. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure she lights you a candle because you got the message in. Uh, Dave, who comes from Scottsdale, Arizona, said, if you wouldn't mind sharing, what is your real slash birth name, not your stage name? Well, I'll give the Italian version. Luigi Alfredo Giovanni Sacco. Just barely Italian. It took me till I was 12 years old to relearn it, you know. It's a, it's a... Like, what's the third one again? <laughs> yeah, Giovanni. When did, you, uh, when did you move to Lou Christie? Uh, hmm, I was forced into it. I didn't move into it. I didn't choose it. Uh, the the record company put it out. Uh, I was just going to either go under one name or, because they used to call me Luigi, you know, and my friends, close friends still do. L, and it's spelled L-U-G-E-E. -E. It was like short for Luigi. So they say, hey, Luigi. Hey, so, and, I, and I had, um, uh, <laughs> yes, and they changed it to Lou, Lou Christie. I went in and I said, I think I'm going to leave my name as just one name, like Luigi, you know, and Fabian, and, you know. Um, and they said, oh, you know, the record comes out today, and you're Lou Christie. And I thought, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, too bad you didn't come in yesterday. We would have had you, but. <laughs> I would have been Luigi, you know. This one is from Anonymous, which we don't often have. And it says, he'll appreciate this. Can you explain the lyrics of Lightning Strikes? <laughs> I think oh. you know who Anonymous might be. Well, I don't know how many of you understand the lyrics to Lightning. Uh, listen to me, baby. You got to understand. You're old enough to know the makings of a man. When I see lips begging to be kissed, not yours, I can't stop, I can't stop myself because lightning strikes. It's a sexual encounter, maybe. I have a word for it, but I can't. It starts we with don't need maybe. it. I, I, <laughs> well, you asked the question. I think question. all the adults can get there on their own. But I was, a, I was asking my girlfriend, you know, I'm gonna, I want to marry him in a chapel. There's a chapel in the Pines waiting for us. You know, you know, stay with me. But if I go off track and I see something, you know, I see lips wanting to be kissed, I... So I took my shot and said, uh, you know, lightning strikes, huh? you know. <laughs> Look at everyone. There's people fanning in the back of the room now. We're going to set up a smoking section over there if anyone needs it after that. Yeah. Thanks, Lou. Then Thanks, after Lou. that, I got banned with the next record. That was Rhapsody in the Rain, if you want to go there. I don't. I, uh, Do you have the beep button? Do you you're, have the You're beep? chicken, huh? huh? <laughs> now, you, listen, if you want to sing song lyrics to these people, I promise uh, you not one of them will shy away. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. Uh, before we get into that, Steve from Arlington, have you ever considered being on Dancing with the Stars? Not with this knee. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I would have done it years ago, but I, 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 I you know, unless I'm going to win, I wouldn't do it. And, I, <laughs> and, I, and right now, at, at, at 76 years old, I would not win, you know. Fair Mary enough. Wilson tried it and a few other people, yeah. so I'm not going to yeah. do it, you know. 
Jim, who comes from Detroit, says, uh, hey, we'll see you in November in uh, November 15th in Dearborn. Were you in any groups prior to your 1962 hits? Well, hmm, that's interesting. Um, I always, I was the one, I always wanted to sing in a group. Always wanted to. And I was always begging my sister to, come on, you got to get in my group. You got to, you know. And, um, and Amy, her name was Amy. She was 18 months older than me. And uh, we were raised together washing dishes and doing all these things. And she'd dry and I'd wash or, she, or she'd wash and I'd dry. And would sing the whole time, you know. And then my mother would come in and join in the harmony. I mean, it was just music. So I knew she could sing. But I always, and I was, I lived out in the country, so I didn't have that many people who sure. were interested in getting into show business with me. Uh, but I, I, we had a group called Luigi and the Lions, mm -hmm. and I was Luigi for about a year. Uh, and they and and we recorded a record and did some background for a girl named Marcy Joe, and it was out of Pittsburgh. And there was a record called Ronnie Come Back, and it was a top forty record. It did really well. And she was from Pittsburgh, and they needed some background. So I called my, and got my sister, and I, you know, come on, Aim, come on, we gotta go do this record. And we, you know, we did that. And then we had a group when I started writing with Twyla, we had, uh, her daughter was in the group, mm -hmm. and another friend, and we, and they, we were called the Classics. Um, and so that was about, oh, oh, except the crew necks, excuse me, when I was oh. in, when I was in, in, you know, we, you're not in the country, you start off in first grade with yep. the same people you graduate with, you know. And uh, I, Judy, the girl who played, uh, sang away in a manger with me in first grade, became part of the crew necks with me, and another friend, so I had two girls and two boys in the crew necks. Uh, we wore crew neck sweaters, you know, with the big C on it, the felt C. <laughs> like, like, like the teenagers, Frankie Lyman and the teenagers. You remember that, you know? So, uh, I was going to say, a we, picture of you would be the perfect, yeah, in the dictionary for a 1950s group, 1960s yeah. group. Uh, Tim from Ambridge says, oh. when did you move across the river? We love claiming you as our favorite son. <laughs> uh, where are you, Tim? You're out there somewhere? <clears throat> Timmy's over here. here. He's in the house. Oh, line. hi, Tim. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he grunted when he it's got amazing. up. I heard him. I heard oh, him. Thank you. <laughs> Took you a little time. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, <laughs> take your Advil. What can I tell you? Uh, well, li well, I lived on, obviously, I don't know if you know, the Spring Run Road is where my father built the house. And I was born in that house, by the way. Um, and uh, we moved when I had the first r million selling record, Lightning, or uh, The Gypsy Cried. Um, as, as the family went, my sister Amy was the first in the family. Then 18 months, it was me. Then 14 years after that, my mother and father had four new children. And we ran out of rooms, bedrooms, and every other room you could think of. And I was lucky enough to get enough money together to to help dad and mom buy a house and we moved there across the river over to Ambridge Ambridge Heights and Ridge Road and uh, that's that's how we moved and everyone had a place to you know brush their teeth and uh, <laughs> and go to sleep and everything like that so we had enough enough room in that house we still claim thank you. you. Thank, we you. Still claim thank you very much. Uh, I, I love Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh, and I love the Beaver Valley. You know, that's Ambridge and Aliquippa and Beaver Falls and Rochester. It's just a, it's just home for me. You know, it's great. Bill comes all the way from Tracy, California. <clears throat> Wayne Newton had many fights because of his voice, and you mentioned the octaves a moment ago. A moment ago, did you ever have the same problem? I had a lot of inner. Uh, sort of like uh, opinions of how, you know, I had a manager, I don't want to say his name, um, because he managed some very, very successful people, two people that I idolized and I wanted to be like. Uh, and then he ended up managing me, but they, he always said, you know, I, of course, I, I, when I, we first met and he wanted to uh, manage me, he had a record called Lightning Strikes that I presented to him that we wrote, Twilight and I wrote, and things. And he said, you've got to stop singing this way. Of course, I thought, what's he talking about? I just had four million selling records, and he's telling, i got to stop singing this way? I, I mean, I he said, no, no, no one wants to see you sing that way at night on, on the Johnny Carson show. You know, you got to stop singing that way. Because they wanted me to sing like, you know, Frank, or, um, you know, uh, Steve Lawrence or something in my natural voice, which is the easiest thing. I, I did that when I was washing dishes, you know. 
uh, growing up with my sister. But I, I wanted to hit record, and I knew I had to get their attention. That's why I started doing the falsetto. And, you know, I said, I had some trouble with my baby. You know, you, you want my attention? Play the record. You know, <laughs> that's the way it worked. But uh, a lot of a lot of agents and that said, oh, you, you they don't want to see you sing like that 11 o'clock at night. So I, I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's a few. You Thank got a couple you, band I, songs. I don't know. You know, I mean, you kids were uh, kids. Huh? You, <laughs> we were... <laughs> We were all pretty much the same age. We were all buying that. That was the records. You know, you had, a, you know, the Four Seasons came and they had records like that. And it was just wonderful. Some of those old records like In the Still of the Night or Earth Angel or, you know. Um, sure. Susan, who comes to us from Pittsburgh, is there any performer you would like to sing with that you haven't previously performed with, living or not? Hmm. Oh, that's a hard one. There's so many that I like. Oh, jeez. No, it doesn't have to be one. You can. Yeah, you can I don't. There's anything. there are people out there that I would love to. Uh, I would love to have uh, done a something with Diana Ross or uh, Luis Miguel. He's a lat Latino singer. Um, uh, uh, you know, there's just so blinking yeah. many. I I <laughs> did. I was lucky to do a a lot of work with Leslie Gore. And we cut some great records together, you know, yeah. And um, and we were just working on some new stuff too recently, you know, before she passed away. But uh, uh, we had we had some new ideas, and and I, and I do have uh, the last record. It's no one has ever heard it, and it hasn't been released yet. Um, that I may put out, you know, that she and I did together, our last record that we did, you know. So. Oh, that's wonderful. And actually. I was I was kind of chatting with Lou backstage, and I said, you know, do you still write? Do you still are you still in that mindset? And you were saying you you're constantly creating still. I mean, it doesn't doesn't stop. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, when, once you get something in your head, especially if you if you put it down on a tape or something, mm -hmm. you know, you just by the time you finish it, you're done. <laughs> you know, sure. it could yeah, go yeah. on for <laughs> weeks or days. You know, I can't get it out of my head. You know, uh, but I do it, and I don't I don't consciously do it, but I start. Just even walking in New York City, just walking. Once I get down the stairs, I'm so, all of a sudden I've got a melody start going on, you know. And I start walking, and it just doesn't leave sometimes until I finish it, you know. Absolutely. What would uh, what would it take for you to release this unreleased album? Out of curiosity, I mean, what's holding you back from it? Why not? Why? Well, there isn't a record. There's the record business is totally different sure. now. I mean, it's it's so obscure and weird. Mm. You know, I'm lucky I can answer my phone. Uh, yeah, this technology has taken over my life to the point it's like, I keep saying I do have a career, and this is not it. You know, yeah. just trying to keep up with technology. But there is an, uh, uh, but the uh, uh, the stuff that I did with Leslie. This is only this was just like one of our last songs. It wasn't a whole album. It was, it was a whole album. No, it was. I used to think on 45 levels, you know, and what the flip side was. Well, when I said the new thing that we cut, it was uh, a well, 45 record with the flip side. <laughs> the beauty now is that people all over the world release one song at a time and become, you know, and that's... I don't know what they do. <laughs> <laughs> do you know the top, do anyone know the top number one record in the country? No. Or the, not, or anyone. No. I have no, no idea. You know, there's no cash box necessarily or billboard or ways to, you know, there's no record sta or radio stations that play... You know that kind of music, even old, the oldie stations. And thank God all you people are here because, you know. Well, I, I, I mean, I have, I, I have released a couple things, uh, and Sirius Radio will play something, you know, that I'll do and things yeah. like that. I'm, I, I will be uh, addressing it soon. Yeah, you yeah, a bunch. yeah. I do a lot on yeah, sixty on six. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. And I. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, but uh, I'll be doing some new radio shows on there on 60s on 6. Um, uh-huh, yeah. Uh, and, but I also have um, uh, a couple of podcasts and a uh, lewchristie.com, or, or a it should have been a hit.com, and you can go from there to, I've picked like 60-some, 60 67 or something songs that I've sort of dragged them around in my memory bank uh, for many years. I mean, a couple of the records go back to 1962 or, you know, 61 or something. And I, I 
talk talk about them and then I'll play the record and you can vote if you want and, and see if you like it because these are records that I thought oh that should have been a hit record mm -hmm. and they never got the right promotion from the radio station or anything like that you know oh thank you thank you uh you know and I and I and it sort of you know these songs I'm still walking around singing them and, and people say what and my drummer says, what, what's that song? You know, I never heard this, you know. <laughs> and he says, I think you make these things up, you know. And I, I don't. They're, these are some of the songs. Some I do. But some, most of them are songs that I've heard. And I, and I never forgot them, you know, never forgot about them, you know. So, That's phenomenal. And I, and, I, and I play them on the show. And so it's, it's fun. So we're, we're at about our 30 minutes here. And I, I, oh, I, heck. I, I know it's quick, isn't it? I want to ask you a question before we get out of here that uh, what, what was it? That helped you realize you'd made it. Was there a moment? Was there a hear your song on the radio? Was there a, a signing of somebody? What did you realize? What, what was the moment where you're like, "Oh wow, this is"? Oh, I don't. I don't know if you ever come to that decision. Fair enough. I Fair mean, enough. That, I really, uh, started making it then. <laughs> well, uh, I I don't know. I was so dedicated to making sure I did. I did it. I and I did the right thing. And I and I continue to keep myself as best I can to make sure that I do what I'm supposed to do, you know, because, you know, I'm not supposed to talk about it. <laughs> My dad told me, yes, just do, do it. it. And so I do it, but I'm always think, you know, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know what that moment was when I thought, I don't, maybe it was, maybe it was on bandstand for a moment, but then it, that could change, sure. you know, three days later. And then when I, you know, got a gold record or something, or sure. But I think that's a testament to your work ethic, though, in terms of what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I don't think of it in those terms. What your father might have instilled, you know, the whole concept <laughs> of not. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen to that. You just you stay humble and you stay hungry, uh, as they like to say. So, yeah. uh, we we've used up our interview time, and I want to say thank you very much. I know I speak on behalf of everyone sitting here in the live studio audience when I say thank you for last night. Thank you. Wonderful shows. Do me a favor as loud as you can. No, Let's hear it for is. Lou Christie. I want to give you my standing ovation. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate it.